It is early morning, Saturday, October 1st, the next to last day of competition. The main stadium is still empty, awaiting the thousands of spectators who will witness the track and field events. Ten miles away on the River Han, the fog has not yet lifted, yet there is much activity. The final warm-up sessions for those who will compete in the kayak championships a few hours later. Kayaking has been on the Olympic program since the 1936 Berlin Games. In the more than half century of Olympic competition, no American has ever won a gold medal. This is 28-year-old Greg Barton of the United States. At the 1984 Los Angeles Games, he won a bronze medal in the 1,000-meter singles event. Leading to Seoul, Greg Barton has become world-renowned. In 1985, he won the 10,000-meter singles world championship. Then one year before Seoul, he won both the 1,000 and 10,000-meter singles world titles. The 10,000 meters is not on the Olympic program. Nevertheless, Greg Barton will attempt to win two gold medals here in Seoul. At 9 a.m., he'll be one of nine finalists in the 1,000-meter singles. And then 90 minutes later, he will join his countryman, Norm Bellingham, in the 1,000-meter doubles. Greg Barton is a unique athlete. He's a mechanical engineer, graduating summa cum laude from the University of Michigan. As a child, he had daily chores on his parents' farm in Homer, Michigan, a town with a population of 2,000. In addition, Greg Barton has overcome a physical handicap. He was born with club feet. I think growing up on a farm helped me. When I was young, I always had to get up and do my chores. My father always made sure that I was responsible for what I did. I think just the surgery and the problems I'd gone through then made me tougher mentally. I realized that there were hard times and you just had to pull through them. And I think it just some of the pain that I went through was just so tough and then now when I'm training I say hey this is no worse than what I've had before I can I can go do anything now Greg Barton's first national team coach was Andy Toro who before coming to the United States won a canoeing bronze medal for Hungary at the 1960 Rome Olympics during the uh, 1980 uh, Olympic training camp uh, the training program called for a 400 meter run and uh, and I, I talk to Greg about it because of his handicap. I thought maybe uh, it would be better not to uh, uh, do the 400 meter, do something else. And, uh, and Greg said, no, he said, I, I want to do that. That's part of the program. I want to be the best. And he is indeed the best. One minute to start. It is 9 a.m. Saturday, October 1st. Thousands of spectators have gathered at the Han River Regatta course to witness the 1,000 meter singles kayak championship. After a series of qualifying and semi-final heats, nine men have made it to the final. The men to watch. Grant Davies of Australia, lane one. Defending Olympic champion Alan Thompson of New Zealand, lane four. Andre Voliva of East Germany, lane five. Greg Barton of the United States, lane eight. And Ferenc Cipes of Hungary on the far outside. I knew I had some tough competition there. The Hungarian was right next to me. I was worried about him, and I had a good lane, though. I could keep an eye on him, and I just wanted to maintain contact throughout the race and then try to pour it on at the finish, which is my strong point. In the opening stages, Greg Barton's fears are correct. Ferenc Cipes of Hungary, to his right, goes out strongly. I had uh, a reasonably good start for myself. I was behind. I was probably in about fourth or fifth during the, the initial few strokes. Then quickly I moved up into third position, which I held about the first half of the race. I was feeling pretty good, but I thought I would start gaining on the Hungarian at that point. He started pulling out a little bit more on me. Greg Barton has eye contact with Cipes of Hungary to his right and Dmitry Bankovsky of the Soviet Union to his immediate left. But down at the bottom in lane one, Grant Davies of Australia is challenging for the lead. 
I looked over at the 500 meter mark and I could see another boat was up there. I didn't know who it was because I wasn't expecting him to be that good. I knew he had a chance for a medal, but I didn't expect him to be in contention to win. The pace of Chief Pesh of Hungary is very fast. Greg Barton decides to move with him. Oliva of East Germany in white and Bankovsky of the Soviet Union are tied for third with Davies of Australia slightly behind them. With 200 meters to go, Barton on top has moved past the Hungarian Chipesh. Now Voliva of East Germany in the middle makes his challenge. Davies of Australia on the extreme right makes one final surge. Coming to the finish, it is a race between Barton on top and Davies at the bottom with Voliva in the middle. several moments, there is no announcement. Neither Greg Barton nor Grant Davies knows who has won. <laughs> Nevertheless, Greg Barton paddles over to Norm Bellingham. In less than 90 minutes, they must be at the starting line for the doubles final. I remember right after the race, I made sure I got the doubles boat out and uh, had it right near the boat dock, so as soon as he finished the race, he could see me, paddle an hour, and get out of his singles and get into the double so he could warm down properly. I wasn't too concerned how he was gonna do it because I figured he'd win. I didn't want him thinking too much about what happened in that race because he had to concentrate on the most important race, which of course would be the race with me. As Greg Barton and Norm Bellingham prepare to paddle off, the scoreboard flashes the results. Grant Davies of Australia first, Greg Barton second, and Andre Voliba of East Germany third. I thought it was a mistake because my coach had told me I'd won. A few people had said I'd won, and I said, they've got this wrong. I hope we've got somebody in the photo finish room checking this out and making sure that they've made the right decision. And at that time, a lady came around with a sheet of paper, which all the medalists signed. I could see that Grant Davies from Australia had already signed for the gold medal, and she told me to sign for the silver. I kind of looked at her like I didn't want to sign for the silver medal, but it started to sink into me that I guess I really had been beaten, and I was the silver medalist in that event. The official result. And the lady came back and said, I'm sorry, we made a mistake. USA is first. And my first reaction would be to just to jump up, yeah, yeah, I got it. But I was talking to Grant at the time, and I could see the disappointment on his face. And I didn't know whether to be happy for myself or sad for Grant, and I didn't know what to say to him. I just reached out and shook his hand, and Grant was a real good sport about it. I was amazed. He congratulated me and said that he was happy to be Olympic champion, even if it was only for 10 minutes. The replay proves that the officials had indeed misjudged the finish. Greg Barton becomes the first American in Olympic kayaking history to stand on the top step of the victory platform. A few minutes after the award ceremony in the 1,000 meters, Greg Barton joins Norm Bellingham for the start of the 1,000 meter doubles. They are not the favorites to win the gold medal. For opposing them are Paul McDonald in front and Ian Ferguson, two kayaking legends from New Zealand. At the 1984 Los Angeles Games, Ian Ferguson won three gold medals, including the 500 meter singles championship. McDonald joined with Ferguson to win the 500 doubles, and they were part of the gold medal winning fours. There is even greater drama in the confrontation between the New Zealanders and the United States. For three years, Norm Bellingham trained with the New Zealanders, in particular, Ian Ferguson. When I was trying to sort out how to paddle, he was a triple gold medalist and I, I was nothing at that stage. And uh, he taught me how to deal with the pain involved in the sport. He taught me how to strategize races. And he taught me how to work out. Without him, I could never have been a contender and I couldn't have been up there at the level of Greg to be able to race with him. Yesterday, the New Zealanders successfully defended their 500 meter Olympic title. They are the favorites to win today's 1,000 meters. 
psychologically and physically, the Americans are at a disadvantage. At the 1987 World Championships, they finished fourth behind the New Zealanders. The race took place less than 90 minutes after Greg Barton's singles victory. Today, the circumstances are the same. The Americans must again face the New Zealanders less than 90 minutes after Barton has won his singles gold medal. We had a lot of problems in 87. I pretty much hit the wall with a quarter of the race still remaining and tightened up. We dropped from in contention for a medal back to fourth place. I knew that it was going to be tough during those two events. People have won both in the 500 meter event, which is a little shorter. A thousand is more difficult. It's a little longer, a little more draining on your system. It is 10.30 a.m., less than an hour and a half after the 1,000-meter singles championships. Greg Barton and Norm Bellingham are one of nine teams in the final. They will race in lane two, second from the bottom. In lane nine, on the far outside, Paul McDonald and Ian Ferguson of New Zealand. They are the only ones to have won both their qualifying and semifinal heats. race gets underway. The New Zealanders are away fast. We had our plan was to hang back a little bit in the first half of the race. We knew that it would be too hard for me after racing in the single to go out with the leaders. We tried to pace out the race. We didn't want to be quite as far behind as we were. The New Zealanders had a good lead on us and the Australians had pulled out as well, who I didn't expect to be quite so good. When we got to the middle of the race, I was worried. I think Norman was worried as well. I was nervous that Greg might have been just so exhausted from the singles race, it was so close. And when you're going against crews that are fresh, like McDonald and Ferguson, or the two East Germans that are very strong, and they're fresh, I just feared that they would be able to take too much on us, that um, Greg was too exhausted. We were quite a ways behind, even with 250 meters to go. And I just said, well, this is it. This is the last race of the Olympics. I'm going to give it everything I've got. That 250 meters from the finish line, I knew the Kiwis were going to kick because I trained with them for so long. They always kick with 250 meters to go. And then they die with about 200 meters to go. They don't think they do. But um, they certainly slow down. And that's when Greg really starts to come on. So we decided that that was going to be where we were going to kick. With 200 meters to go, New Zealand on the left leads, Australia on the right second, the United States above Australia third. The United States first, New Zealand second, Australia third. Oh my God, that was close. that was so close. And I turned around, I saw the on the big screen where they're showing the actual footage of the race. They would always focus in on the winner. And I turned around, I saw myself looking back into a camera, and I go, Oh God, that's it. We've won.